Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope you are all well. Um, we're back to Monday nights after last uh, week's uh, bank holiday. Um, I just, everyone, if you've got a chance to come in, um, just before I get going, we've got a chat box here. Can you type in here if you can hear me okay or not? Uh, can you see me as well? Cool. Brilliant. Right. Um, so a few more people join in. Are we going to get up to 50? So the plan for this evening is we are going to look at the last task of the advanced bookkeeping exam. Um, it is the, it, it's quite a good one because you can, you can almost be certain what you're going to get. You will get an extended trial balance. Um, the plan this evening is... Um, we're on top of the extended trial balance. It's the last task. Uh, I assume you've seen an extended trial balance at some point in your life. Uh, so we're not going to sort of explain you know, debits and credits and thing, but we will sort of, I will assume that, yeah, you have some idea what we're talking about. Uh, just while everyone uh, joins us, uh, I do want to just drop in there that uh, First Intuition, uh, this is on Team FI, won PQ Magazine Online College of the Year this year. Um, very proud of that. So we've got 25% off our online and online live whole level bookkeeping and single unit courses. Right. I won't plug that anymore. Well, I probably will, but not for a bit. Um, so we're going to talk about ETBs. So while everyone joins in, um, I want to talk about ETBs. ETBs are something that people do do in the workplace. Um, everyone thinks about, you know, we use computers and things like this for this. I remember I did my AT and then I worked, got a job in practice um, to do my ICAW training. And on the first day, I sat there with a set of records that didn't really give me much of an induction or training. And I went on and I thought, look, I've done an ETB. Isn't that brilliant? Uh, and it balances and everything. And said, oh, that's great. We've got computers that do this. And I was like, well, that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, however, it's not a dead skill because, A, computers need to do it. So you need to know it works. But also, we also used to use a software called Iris. Iris Accounts Production, uh, which is really, really good. It's just not exceptionally cheap. Um, so we didn't buy the, um, the, the the package for trust accounts. We did some trusts. Um, and so to do that, we actually had to do great big ETBs on A3 because uh, the computer, well, the computer did do it, but we weren't paying for it to be done. Uh, so it, it is stuff that people do all day, every day, ETBs, and actually the really, really I was going to say fun, they're not. Uh, they're relatively straightforward in terms of the exam. So it, you get 20 marks available for this um, task, which means you should get to spend 24 minutes on it. Um, which in terms of student success, students do tend to do really, really well on this one compared to like accruals and prepayments and um, uh, correcting journals like we covered last week. Um, so once you've got through task three and task four, you know, you, you've done the hard part. Uh, now it's just a case of filling in the boxes. Um, and again, um, it runs on the own figure rule. So if you're not sure, don't give up. Do not give up on an ETB. There's lots of marks for just moving one figure to another box. Um, you're there to pass the exam, not to produce a perfect ETB. If it doesn't balance, you've got something wrong. Either way, you might have 70%. That's all you need on exam day. Ideally, you would know how to do it and it's perfect. But if not, you know, we'll worry about that outside the exam. You know, never ever give up on an ETB. So before I go any further, uh, can everyone see my screen? Okay. Yes, cool. So this is taken from um, AT's sample assessment. I thought I'd use this because then everyone's got access to it. Um, now, We've got it set up like this. I am going to zoom in uh, because A, I'd like you to be able to see it, and B, there's lots of figures, uh, fiddly figures in an ETB. Um, and I've, I've got the tightest hand right anyway. So, what we're going to do is we, we, the first thing we've got is a, a reconciliation. Um, so, it's a bit like a bank rec that, uh, well, this one is a bit like bank rec at uh, you did a level two in the bookkeeping controls. However, it's not a case of just churning out a bank rec, it's more you need to know um, what's going to cause an error and what 
isn't going to cause an error uh, in certain scenarios and only correct the error that you need to. So, uh, if everyone can hear me all right, let's get started because we've got 24 minutes to do two of these. Um, I wouldn't think we're spending 50 minutes on this. Um, so what you will get, you will get some errors or issues and you will be asked to deal with them. However, you won't be asked to deal with all of them and you need to know which ones you're going to deal with. I should say for a uh, start, there, um, this has been recorded, so if you have to nip off halfway through or something, everyone will be emailed the recording um, tomorrow. It will be, it won't be tonight, I promise you. So let's get it clearing ahead, the scenario. Well, it's not just AVBK, any unit, get clear in your mind what the question is asking, because if you don't, um, you'll get it wrong, and then um, it's far better. Spend some time, read the question, Make sure you get it and then answer it once. You, know, you only run out of time if you have to redo things because you've got it wrong because you've not read the question. So we're preparing the bank rec for a sole trader. Um, the balance on the bank statement shows a debit balance of £1,930 and the cash book is the debit balance of £2,407. Remember, the cash book is our accounting records. Now, if you were to adjust for all of these transactions, these two figures would marry up. Um, and if you've got time, you can do that but um, you're not being expected to, nor you've been asked to marry these up. Um, so let's let some more people in. So th what we're looking for here is we've been given six issues. Some of them are not errors, some of them are. Um, and we've been asked to show three items, and there will only be three, uh, that should appear in the cash book side of the reconciliation. So what we're doing is getting our cash book figure, and then we're gonna make some adjustments to that and come to a adjusted figure. Then we've got our bank statement figure, make some adjustments to that and come to an adjusted figure. And by that point there, they should tie up to the same figure and our accounts are correct because it matches the bank statement. However, we've not been asked to correct the bank or adjust the bank. We've only been cash uh, asked to correct for the in the cash book. So it's only things that are in that are going to affect our accounting records that we need to look for. So the first one is a remittance advice for customers we received. So we've got it. We've entered it into our accounting records for £734. So the customer says, we're going to pay you. Here's the money. But it hasn't appeared on the bank statement yet. So as far as we're aware, we're going to get the money. It's probably a good customer. So We've got the money, it's coming. We've accounted for it in our accounts because we don't want to then run our uh, aged debtors and then send a statement to the customer saying, you owe us this money uh, when they've paid us. It's probably just, I don't know, maybe sent it on a Saturday or whatnot. And it's just working through the banking system. So it's coming in, our accounts are, co are correct. It's just the bank statement hasn't quite caught up as yet. So we don't need to adjust the cash book for that. We will need to adjust uh, the bank saving reconciliation, but we've not been asked to do that, so we won't do that. Uh, is everyone clear as to why we're not adjusting for that first one? Cool. Um, let's move on. Right, the next one. Uh, a cheque from a customer of £367 for its outstanding debt at the year end is received in April. So, £367, it, it was a debt outstanding. So as at the year end, it was outstanding. Following in the, uh, in the future, it eventually turned up. So as at the end of March, when we're doing our bank reconciliation, it was a legitimate debt. So we don't want to show that it was paid because as, as that point in time, remember our statement of financial position, which we'll come to, is a snapshot in time. So at that point there, it was actually an outstanding debt. So we're not going to do anything with that. Now the next one, is a payment for a purchase of a non-current asset showing the bank statement, but it has not been entered. I meant to sort of add emphasis on that by underlining it, not cross it out because it's not um, useful. It has not entered into our accounting records as yet. So we need to reflect that because it's actually gone out. It's on the bank statement. Uh, we just maybe haven't picked it up. So we need to correct our cash book for that. So we are going to adjust for this. So. You can enter these in any order uh, into the exam. Uh, I don't know why you won't work, work down, but anyway. So we're going to adjust for number three. And it is because we haven't got a payment out of our bank account in our cash book. 
It's in the bank statement, but it's not in our cash book. So do we want to debit or credit our cash book to adjust for the fact that we haven't got this payment? You got a 50-50 chance. Everyone's, every, everyone's obviously switched on or very, very lucky because everyone's right. Well done. It is a payment out. So we're going to credit our cash book with £2,174 because we need to reflect that in our cash book. So the next one, the bank has made an error. Uh, on the last day of the month, a payment of £1,087 was, statement was duplicated. So the error is in the bank uh, statement. Um, they don't make errors nowadays, um, but it's what's happened here. So the bank's made an error, they'll correct it. Our records are correct. So we're not gonna do anything. It'll just get sorted out uh, in the wash, shall we say. They'll just adjust it later on. So we don't have to do anything. Now the next one is a direct debit of 422 pound. So that is what it actually was has been recorded in the accounts as 222 pound so the error lies in the accounts so we're going to have to adjust it does anyone have a stab about how much we're going to adjust Natty, uh, Natasha, uh, everyone's like, it's going to be £200 and it's going to be a credit because we've only taken £222 out of a bank account. It should have been £422. So we've got £222 leaving the bank account. We just need to correct it. So it's going to be a credit of £200. So then that will bring our 222 up to 422 uh, And then the final one, interest charges of £142. Again, have not been entered in the cash book. And that's quite common. You don't normally see the interest charges um, until you see the bank statement or you see it online because banks nowadays do not like sending out a bit of paper that says, we're going to charge you £142 of interest. It just goes out and then you pay it um, and you see it on your bank statement and then you correct your records when you see it. So we are going to adjust for that. Uh, again, just people want to have a stab at debit or credit. It is money, uh, it's an interest charge, so it's an expense, uh, it is money leaving the bank account. Everyone's correct, correct. It is a credit because there is money leaving the bank account. Now, if you had time, you could adjust uh, the 2,407 of the bank and it would come back to an adjusted figure, but you've not been asked to do that. So if you've got time, you can check that you're right. But um, for now, I'd just move on uh, and worry about it later. Really, that's the question. We're all we asked to do is adjust the cash book for these um, transactions, nothing else. Don't worry if it's not part of, likewise, you might get recon reconciliation about the purchase ledger and purchase ledger control, and you've been asked to adjust the purchase ledger control. So if you've got an error that affects the purchase ledger, well, you care, move on. Uh, it's only just for the ones that uh, affect the purchase ledger control that you've been asked to do. So another one, multiple choice, never, ever, ever, leave these blank um so what have we been asked which of these is true choose one i.e there's only going to be one um so it's all about the net pay control account remember what that is we we debit the wages expense and we credit net wages control and then from that we then change that liability and allocate it out to the various other liabilities such as uh, net pay such as hmrc pension contributions um any uh you know any deductions um that come off someone's wages as well save as you earn scheme sort of thing so which one is true or false so the net pay control account is a summary of memorandum accounts for each employee do you run a wages control account for each employee yes yeah, sarah very good question it is exactly the same as the wages control account um well, the wages control account is, is the main one. And then we take it from the net pay control, i.e. when she, what is owing to the employees is the net pay control account. So um, it, 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 we use that, we bring the expenses in and we show it all to all the liabilities, but we bring it in. No, well, no, it, it, well, we call it that, well, AT call it the net pay control account, but it, it is in effect the wage control account and the end of it, but I'm not going to go down that route because that's giving the answer away. Um, but it, it is the wage control account. So you, you bring it in, you debit the expense, 
and then you would credit the liabilities and then from that liability it should then all go out to the different liabilities cool so it's not a memorandum of um accounts for each employee you just bring in the expense for each pay period weekly fortnightly monthly four weekly in some cases uh in, in whole and then you credit it so it doesn't include every single um employee well it does include every single employee but it's not on a per employee basis it's this is the cost for march these are the liabilities for march so i can't think of another way to do it but i'm going to give the game away at the end of it it should have a zero balance when all the entries have been made. So once you've paid your employees, you've moved your liabilities off to the HMRC account, the um, pension contribution account, at the end of the day, your net pay control account, your net wage control account will have a zero balance. And then you think, right, that's all moved. And then you'll bring it in for the next month, let's say April. Um, so that should, if you carry forward a balance in your uh, net wage control account, you've got an issue. Um, the next one, if it, if, like we say here, if you have got a balance, you've definitely got an error. If you haven't got a balance, it doesn't mean that you have definitely not got an error. You can have an error that doesn't show up in the net wage control account. Um, and you know, if you do the bank reconciliation, that's all it means you pay people. It doesn't mean to say that it's correct. So uh, you might have paid HMRC and the pension contribu contribution people the wrong amount. Um, and you know the bank's correct but you've got an issue with your wage so you can never it's what if, often if you get a question that says we'll assume there's no everything's correct or there's no errors the answer to that is is pretty much never no you can never count out all the errors there's always a way of making errors and that's the same when you go to professional synoptic there's questions that say doing so and so will ensure that the accounts are 100 percent perfect you can never assume that uh, it just increases the likelihood of being right but it never guarantees and, and likewise, for reasons that we've already mentioned, it doesn't have individual employees. So just bring in the expenses for March, say, uh, as a whole. So the total gross. Remember, the wages expense is um, the person's gross pay plus the employer's national insurance contribution as well that goes on top of that. So that's that. Um, like I say, never leave them uh, blank because there's no negative marking. In AAT. So this is the most important one. This is where you're spending most of your time. This is the ETB. Is that clear enough for everyone? Because uh, I remember, I do appreciate there's lots and lots of boxes uh, in this. Can everyone see this okay? Yeah, cool. So what you've got here in an ETB is your initial TB. And then you've got some adjustments. Now, on AQ 2013, you had to enter the adjustments. Um, you don't need to do that. You will never need to do the adjustments. The reason being is the adjustments that we're entering here are adjustments that have been tested um, elsewhere in the exam. So, for example, here you can see we've got a missing payment for interests of 75 and 75. Um, we've brought in and a correction error where some equipment's been posted to a cost when it should have been an expense, which is here. Um, here we've prepaid some office expenses. We, you're gonna have to do prepayments in task three. So we know in task three whether you can do this or not. So doing this again was just taking up time. And from a technical point of view, it means there's no own figure rules because um, you're just literally adding two numbers together. So they give you the adjustments, so your figures should be right. So, so the key thing to remember here is you've got debits and credits for each of the four columns. And the most important thing, I, I know it's probably very basic for all of you, but I just want to stress it again. If you have a credit and you enter a credit on top of it, it's going to go up in amount. If you've got a debit and you enter credit on top of it, it's going to go down. And vice versa, if you've got a credit and you enter a debit. And likewise, if you enter a debit on top of a debit, it goes up. So there is no sort of uh, wrong, right way or wrong way to start this, start at the top and work down. So in our columns here, we've got statement of profit and loss and statement of financial position. So remember that the first one's profit and loss, 
next one statement of founder position it doesn't have to be in that order there's no reason but generally we do have the statement of profit and loss first so the key thing here that students sort of struggle with is what goes where and you start learning out that goes in the statement of profit loss this goes in the statement of founder position if your mind goes blank one of the sort of ways i always suggest to try and rigor it is is think of the figure does it go up or down or does it just go up so for example the first one the bank account the bank account um, can go up as people pay you then it goes down as you pay people so if it goes up and down a bit like the sales edge control you know people owe you money then they pay you it goes down you put your invoices and it goes up if it goes up and down it goes in a statement of financial position which is a snapshot in time whereas if it goes up over time and never ever goes down for example it builds up the things things like sales sales generally go up um your rent expenses will only go up over the course of the year then it goes up goes in statement of profit and loss i hope that helps um, but with practice you will think like the bank goes in statement five position uh, sales obviously go in statement of profit loss so we're going to work our way down remember we, although we chopped it off the left hand one is statement of profit loss the right hand one is the statement of financial position so remember here right we've got a bank and we've got 958 credit we've got a credit on top of that of 75 pound so that's going to be uh, 1033 pound and that's going to go on the credit side in the statement of financial position because we're overdrawn um is everyone okay with that before i start plowing through these Cool. So next one is capital. The capital is the amount that we owe or the business owes the business owner. So it's effectively a liability for the business. So that's why it's a credit. And again, that can go up or down uh, depending on if the company makes a loss or a profit or the business owner takes some money in or takes some money out. So Natalie's uh, exactly right statement of financial position. So that's going to go, and there's no adjustment, £11,000 on that side. So really simple marks is that one so like i say you want to get make sure you get time on this and you also want to make sure uh that you never give up don't get flustered just keep plowing away and look for the easy marks now the next one is a really tricky one because we've got a debit and a credit now 99 times that 100 they're the same figure so you just offset them and you come to a balance of zero we don't do that closing inventory is the only one where you will see uh, two figures in the same row and the reason being you've got to reflect two things with closing stock so you've got the asset of money of stock sat in the stock room that you can use in the future but you've also got to reflect the fact that when we buy stuff it just gets put into purchases and that goes and that's a debit so our credit of uh, in closing inventory offsets the debit of purchases to come to our true cost of sales so when we come to purchases later down which is here actually uh our credit of 9930 will offset that so we're going to put the uh, credit of 9930 in our closing inventory in the statement of profit and loss and then the debit one of it is 9930 that goes as an asset because we've got an asset we can use in the future um so that goes in the statement of financial position so let's start moving through so we've got depreciation charges that is not the cumulative depreciation because you see that later below this is the charge for this year it's an expense so as an expense it generally goes up it doesn't go down uh, so it's an expense it's going to go in our statement of profit and loss of three thousand eight hundred and ninety five pound next we've got equipment at cost so we've got the debit of some equipment but then we've obviously made a, um, a journal entry here so we're going to adjust that so it's going to be 2162 less the credit of 689 gives us 19,473 and that's going to go as a debit in our statement of financial position because it's an asset we've got some machinery that's worth well worth 19,473 then we've got the accumulated depreciation this is the one that um uh, offsets the equipment at cost uh, to come to a uh, net book value so we've got credit of 15,579 we don't need to do anything to it 15,579 that's that then we have interest paid so that's a expense a charge so we're going to add them together so 63 plus 75 138 so we've got a debit and a debit so it goes up and it goes in statement of 
profit and loss because it's an expense of 138. Now we've got a loan. So this is a liability. Um, and obviously here, um, there must have been, because you can see it's come from suspense down at the bottom here. Um, we must have missed a payment and it's gone to suspense or something. Anyway, we've corrected it. So we had a liability of credit of 6566, but we've debited it with £1,085. That leaves us a balance of 5481 Now we owe it to the bank, uh, so it's going to go in statement of financial position as a credit because we're going to have to pay that amount of money out in the future. Then we've got office expenses. There's lots going on with office expenses. We've got a debit and a credit. So the debit's going to increase it. The credit's going to reduce it. Now office expenses is an expense. It's going to go in statement of profit and loss. So that gives us 22495 plus the 689, because that's on the debit side. Debit on the debit increases. Less the 290 gives us £22,894. And that's going to go on the debit side. Ninety-four pound uh, opening inventory. Now this is uh, stock we had right at the beginning of the year. We will have used this during the year, uh, so it goes in our cost of sales calculation. Uh, so we haven't bought it during the year, so it's not going to show in purchases. But we have used it to make our sales, so it goes as a debit because it's an expense, and it goes in our statement of profit and loss. I should say, as I write this in, if you, anyone's got any questions about any figures, uh, jump in and let me know. Uh, I don't want to plow ahead and be losing people um again payroll expenses it's an expense there's no adjustment that's going to go in there 2825 we've got prepayments prepayments has now been entered it's been entered on the debit side uh, we haven't got anything in the initial transaction this is an asset because it is something we can use to um in the future um it might be an expense like rent we can use or prepay telephone line rental or something either way it's an asset and it goes in the statement of financial uh, position uh, purchases of expense uh, there's no adjustment there 79454 uh, good question so so payroll liabilities um, basically that's like a catch-all account that will technically include any national insurance, any PAYE, any pay, uh, pension liabilities you owe, potentially any employees you're not paid as yet. So that is how much is owing and the expenses, and it should be a lot bigger figure, will be the cost of your employees over the course of the year. Uh, so you could very well have both, but you've got, but a rule of thumb is the smaller is gonna go in the statement of financial position, the larger is gonna go in statement of profit loss. You wouldn't owe more than you've incurred it just wouldn't work um but yeah you could potentially well have both uh so you just got to be carefully put the right one in the right one you know if you've got exam panic and nerves and everything um just be careful it but it's let's control how much we owe our suppliers it's liability uh because same in a financial position not much to do there just move it across one three one six seven what have you got next sales sales uh it goes in a statement of financial uh, profit and loss we've actually got an adjustment to make um so that will be one two six one three nine plus four eight five gives us one two six six two four can you read that okay um six two four uh sales less control account shows what people owe us, it's an asset, therefore it goes in the statement of financial position of 16979. Now suspense, uh, suspense is one where we've, well, someone else has, we haven't done it, it's made some adjustments and suspense will be a zero. You can't, the question will not have a figure in suspense. Um, so I could work it out, but it is zero. It will also be zero in this type of question, so. You can see here it does actually come to zero but don't worry about it um and then the last one we've been asked to do is vat now this is one sometimes people do make a bit of a mistake on vat vat is i and it's not always the case that you owe it so here um it's a credit therefore it's a liability so it, it, as sharon says it, it does go in statement of financial position um 
it will always go in the statement of financial position. It will never go to the statement of profit and loss. It's not an expense. It's not income. It's someone else's money. But it could well be a debit because you HMRC owe you VAT. Do not assume that it's always going to be a credit uh, VAT. There's lots of businesses where it's nearly always a debit, i.e. it's an asset. Uh, I won't go into that because that's indirect tax. Um, but it is what it is. So don't assume that uh, it's all credit, but it will always go in the statement of financial position. I promise you that. So the only other figure we are missing, let more people in, is our figure here for profit plus loss. So at the moment, we haven't totaled our um, figures up. Um, our columns up. So this is only half the job. So it doesn't balance. We need to prove that it balances. So what we're going to do is take the easy one. Uh, so we're going to take the credit side of statement of, of profit and loss, which is 9930, 9930 plus 126624. That gives us a figure of 136.554. Um, then we're going to add up our debit side. Uh, so we start at the top. Here's a figure of 3895 plus 13898 plus 2085 plus 7945 plus 794554. Is that right? 137624. So that comes to 137624. So, good question. Has this company made a profit or a loss? The debit side is greater than the credit side. Ah, sorry, I've got a transposition error here. Yes, uh, everything. It's not 624, it's 264, according to my calculator. So the debit side is still greater than the credit side. Therefore, our expenses are greater than our sales therefore we've made a loss so the difference of 137624 minus 136554 gives us 710 pound so that will go in on the credit side to make it balance happy to let some more people in uh gives us 710 pound and we are not done there do not think right let's move on to the um statement of financial position because you've not finished. This is a really, really common mistake. I see this all the time. Um, we now need to correct our total on the credit side for the loss that we've just put in. Um, and it does come to this, but always update your total. So it's one, three, seven, uh, one, three, seven, six, two, six, four, wasn't it? And now we can do the same with our, um, statement of financial position. So we'll get, which side should we do? Well, we know it's a loss, therefore it's going to go on the um, debit side. So let's do the credit side first. So that's 1033 plus 11,000 pounds plus 15579 plus 5481 plus 13167 plus 1122 gives us a figure of 47,382. Now, I just want to clarify, now I'm going to put the loss in, um, and just because our statement of financial, uh, statement of profit loss balances doesn't mean to say it's right. So this will prove if we're right or wrong, because if this doesn't balance, we've got an error somewhere. So if we put this in, 710 pounds, it's going to be your debit because it's reduced the capital figure, i.e. the amount owing to the business owner, which was the £11,000 because they made a loss. And we'll let some more people in. So hopefully it will balance off at the right figure. So we're starting off at the top, 9930 plus 1947 3 plus 290 plus 1679 plus £710 loss does, if we find it there, not make it up it does come to forty seven thousand three hundred eighty two pound so we can be almost certain it is right if it doesn't balance you've got an error 
however, you could have literally everything right and it not balance. One error will throw this out pretty much. So one thing on one side, uh, but don't start deleting things. Um, look at your answers, work your way down and go, is that, have I adjusted it properly? Is the debit on top of the debit? calculate correctly and then start thinking is it in the right column debit or credit or is it in the right uh section is it in the same financial position which should be in profit loss don't uh delete it all and start again you'll still get marks um, how do we treat books and journals in the tb as an expense um i'm sure what you mean um, all the adjustments will be made for you um it's just a case of adjusting the figures in the initial TB and then knowing if it goes in the um, same profit loss or financial position. I think that's, I think, let me know if that does or does not answer your question. Uh, so cool, if that was all right, let's do it again. Uh, so uh, again, I'm gonna zoom in, if I just move my little widget out of the way and hopefully you can see this a bit better. Uh, maybe not that much. There we are. So we've got the same thing again. Is that okay for everyone? Can everyone read that? Okay. Now we've got more people coming in. Cool. So it's the same thing, but we'll go through it. Um, we know what it is. It's a sole trader, 31st of March. We've got a difference between the bank statement and we have a different, uh, and the cash book. Now we've got all the, well, not the same, but the similar sort of things, uh, different adjustments we need to uh, account for. And once again, we've been asked to show which three items would appear in the cash book side of the reconciliation. So it's the second mock exam, but it is, pretty much the same question um but the principle is the same whether it's the cash book or the bank rec side or the purchase ledger and the purchase ledger control um you just need to focus on what is going to affect the one thing we've been asked to do so we are looking for things that are going to make our cash book incorrect so the first one is a check for 63 pound received from a customer has been dishonored by the bank on the last day of the accounting period and no adjustment has been made in the accounting records. Why has it done that? I don't know. Um, so basically we've received a check from a customer. We put it in the bank in good faith. Um, and then the bank went to draw down the check and went, no, this customer has no money. So our accounting records reflect the fact that we have 63 pounds coming out of our bank account and we shouldn't. Uh, so, well, I'm gonna give the answer. Yes, we need to correct for this, but are we going to debit or credit our cash book? Because it's money coming in, but it's actually technically money that should have come in. Um, so we would originally credit the sales ledger control, say we don't, they don't owe us that money anymore, and then debited the bank. And then it turns out they do owe us. So we would debit sales ledger control and say, you should owe us that money. And we're going to credit the bank with 63 pound. So moving on, a customer has overpaid. Uh, two remittance devices for £670 have been received and processed in March, and two back payments are on the bank's own. Uh, what a world to be in, that's great. Um, however, our cash book's right, they physically have paid us uh, twice. We, we, it's what happened, we've got to record it. So we're not gonna adjust for that. Um, we will do in the future when we have to pay that customer back. Uh, we will then have to amend the cash book when that payment goes out, but at the moment, We've been paid £670 twice. We've got to reflect that. So the next one is an advice received from the bank showing charges of £92. Uh, it's been entered in the cash book, but it's not yet on the bank statement. So it's it's bank charges. They're going to go out, but it is correct in our bank statement, uh, but, uh, cash book. It's just not the bank statement. So the bank statement will catch up, but from a cash point point of view, we don't need to... Uh, don't worry about it, it'll be sorted. Now the next one is a tricky one. So a direct debit of 128 pound has been recorded in the cash book as a receipt. So it's 
money that should have gone out of the bank, we've recorded it as going into the bank. So I'll give you a clue, we're going to have to amend our cash book, but does anyone want to be brave? Sharon has. Uh, you're exactly right. So it's not £128. It is. So we need to effectively enter it twice. So we have debited it with 128 we should have credited it so we've got to credit it with 128 once we'll get rid of the incorrect entry and then credit it again with 128 we'll enter the correct entry so we are going to adjust for it and it's number four isn't it and it's going to be a credit of 256 um because we need to get rid of the incorrect one and enter the correct one so we are doing that uh, a bank's receipt of £1,590 from a customer appears in the bank statement, but is not yet recorded in the cash book. Um, relatively clear, that one. Um, it's on the bank statement, they paid us, but we've not recorded it as yet. So we are going to adjust for that. Um, anyone with brave debit or credit? I like where everyone's going with this. Yeah, it's money that should have come in the, into, the, into the bank, uh, something to record it, increase the asset. So that's going to be a debit of... £1,590. Um, so we've filled that box, but let's be sure that we haven't missed anything. Um, let's look at the last one. A faster payment to, supply to a supplier has been delayed by the bank due to a change in the recipient's account number. It's not shown in the bank statement. Basically, we paid someone. We've put it in our accounting records. It's not gone out of our bank account as yet, but it's going to. Um, the money will leave uh, the business. So it is correct. We need it in our accounting records. Uh, it will just catch up in the uh, bank statement at a later date. So is that one okay? I mean, the one where you double it is a bit tricky, but um, other than that, it wasn't too bad, I don't think. Cool. Now look again, we've got another multiple choice question. Never leave these blank. Um, so lots, there's lots of sensible answers to the sort of thing uh, here, but it is, the question he's asking us about, why is it important to follow organizational policies and procedures? So lots of good answers, but unless it's, it is about following organizational policies and procedures, it's not relevant. So this, the first one is to eliminate the possibility of numerical errors. Like I say, you can never, ever, ever guarantee there's no errors. So that's never going to be the answer. Um, the next one is gain authority to access uh, access records necessary for your day-to-day -day work. Um, it's good to get authority, but that's not really about following uh, organizational policies and procedures. Um, it's not a policy or procedure, it's just, you know, it's not gonna give you authority. You have to go to authority to get that. So that's not gonna be it. Um, whereas policies and procedures, they do lay out in a very clear manner, uh, yeah, Pretty much everyone's guessed this, it is C, lay out in a clear manner uh, of what you are expected to do or not do uh, in work and make it very clear. Um, and finally, CPD. CPD is really important. And as a full member of AT, you are bound to do the CPD, CPD cycle twice a year. Uh, it's great fun, I promise you. <clears throat> um, but following organizational policies and procedures is not really keeping your skills up to date. It's just not relevant. So whilst it's a good answer, uh, it's not, not the answer we're looking for. Wasn't the I've catchphrases said that, um, show my age there. So that's that, that, like I say, it's, it's a, one of those types of questions, never leave them blank. Move on. Now, again, we've moved to the ETB, um, conscious time. So we'll just, it's the same principle, it's the same layout. These never ever vary. You'll never have to do the adjustments. It's always statement of profit and loss first, uh, statement of finance position. Yeah, it is what it is. Now, we've got some different accounts in here, which is slightly more interesting. Um, I feel like that sort of thing. So we're gonna run down here. Um, some of the ones we've covered before, such as depreciation charges, I won't go into, uh, but I'll, I'll look at the, the new ones we've not seen before in a bit more detail. So now this is one, that really catches people out. So in here we have got, if I move my mouse down, we've got allowance for doubtful debts. Oh, we don't want that. Um, get rid of that. Uh, allowance for doubtful debts and irrecoverable debts. So allowance for doubtful debts is a provision for how much we think 
people won't pay us. How much of our debts in our sales ledge control account will go bad? So it's going to offset our sales ledge control account. So if our, well, of our 38,934 in our sales ledge control account, we first, we are not gonna get paid. That because it needs to offset the sales, it's now stint of financial position. So that's going to go on the credit side because it reduces the asset of people owing us money. Uh, moving on, we've got the bank. So the bank is obviously we've been through this, we know where it goes, but we've got an adjustment here. So we've got 5726 debit, and then we've got adjustment of a credit of 2416. So we're going to take that off, it gives us 3310. So we haven't reduced it completely, it's still going to be a debit, but that goes on the debit side of the statement of financial position. So 3310. Likewise with capital, um, we've got, well, this time we've got a credit on a credit, so we're just going to add them up. So that's 190070 plus 9430 gives us 28,500, and it goes on the credit side because it's a liability. And then we've got closing inventory. I went to this, it's the same principle. You've got two rows, uh, two, well, one row and two figures in that row. You've got a debit and a credit. The credit goes in the statement of profit and loss to offset purchases. And the debit goes in the statement of final position because it's an asset and you've got some stock sat there. Uh, depreciation charge, we've been through this. It's an expense of 5,946. Irrecoverable debts. Now this, is not a provision for what we think will go bad. Irrecoverable debts are, it has gone bad. We are not going to get that money from that person. Um, we know exactly who it is, how much it was, and um, we have written it off. So Sarah's exactly right. That goes as an expense in our statement of profit and loss because we've written that amount off. It's not a provision. And actually you might see an adjustment for doubtful debt in here, then that would go in the um, statement of profit loss as a debit as well. So the movement is the expense. The closing provision, the allowance for doubtful debt is the one that goes as a credit in the statement of financial position. So that's a new one. Um, moving on, we've run down office expenses. We know where they go, but we've got to make adjustments. So 33222 plus 1320 gives us 34,000. 542 pound uh, open inventory we've been through 16,760 pound all the payables um don't know what it is but it's liability so we just know that 1460 credit because that's liability plus another credit of 1320 means we owe someone 2780 pound then we've got payroll costs so this is paying staff uh, so that goes as an expense 28381. Purchases we've been through 177363. Purchase ledger control account. So this is how much we owe our suppliers that say liability. So but we do have to make adjustment. 19,402 plus 495 gives us 19,897. Is that right? 19,897. That's what I've got. Yeah. Uh, sales, we know what this is. 268077. Can't squeeze that in. Sales ledge control account. Uh, this is an asset. People own as money. That's always good. £38,934. Now, suspense, uh, again, should be zero. You can see here we've got a credit. Take off now 495. Add 490. It's going to be zero. Uh, so don't worry about that. VAT. So we've got an opening credit of 5225. And then we're going to debit it. Perhaps there's a missing payment. Oh, in fact, there was because there was come from the bank here. Uh, so maybe misspoke. Anyway, so it's going to reduce it. However, it's not enough to make it an asset. We still owe HMRC, but now we only owe them £2,809, which goes in our statement of financial position. Right, let's more where are we at uh, and then vehicles at cost so this is the 
actual cost of buying, the original cost of buying the vehicle, we must have bought one during the year. Or oh, actually what's happened here is you can see the 9,430 has come in from capital. So the business owner has introduced a vehicle that they've paid for themselves. So that's where that's come from. Um, you don't need to know really. You just need to know that you'd get 22,280 and add 9,430 to it. You don't need to know the story or anything behind it. Um, nice if you do. But anyway, uh, it gives us 31,000, uh, which doesn't go there at all because uh, it's an asset. It's the cost of buying assets. So that's going to go in the statement of financial position of 31,710. And then the accumulated depreciation offsets that. So that goes, uh, as we know, in here again, on 3873. And that's it. So we have not stopped there. Is everyone happy with that before um, I start working out profit? And have a drink. Cool. So we'll do it again. So it's profit loss again. So let's see if we've made a profit or a loss. So we've got 17,510 closing inventory plus 268077 gives us, I'm going to move it down a bit, yeah, put an extra zero on there. Squeeze there. So 285 587. Yeah. So, and then on our debit side, we've got any figures up there. No, so we've got 5946 plus 490 plus 3, wait a minute, 34542 plus 16760 plus. 28381 plus, I know this is exciting, what should we put numbers in the calculator? Um, so we've got a figure of 263482, uh, so I'm going to put it down here. So what do we think? Has this company made a profit or a loss? Yes, because our credit side is greater than our debit side, so our uh, sales is greater than our profit, uh, expenses and therefore we've made money. So the profit is, not for that, uh, 22,105. So if we make a profit, it goes on the debit side to balance it up because obviously the credit side is greater. So that's gonna go in here at 22,105 pound. And then do not forget to get rid of that. And then update our total because you will get marks for that. It's a really common mistake to sort of forget to do that, 287. So now last one, we can do our statement of financial position. Not even sort of figures right at the top. Uh, so let's do from the credit side first, so I can don't have to go back up here. So 1500 plus 28500 uh, plus 27801 plus 19897 plus 28873 gives us uh scroll down it so i've got six nine three five nine now i put it down here because i know i'm gonna have to adjust this because we've made a profit therefore it's going to increase the amount that's money that's owed to the business owner therefore it's going to go into the capital account which is up here as a credit so we know that size we're going to have to have profit but let's uh sure um and then on the debit side I mean, you could just put the profit in, and but I always think it's good to check. Uh, so we've got 3310, clear your calculator, 3310 plus 17510 plus 38934 plus 31710. Gives me a figure from scroll. Why was my mouse gone? Uh, 91. Four six four. So if we get six nine three five nine, add on our profit of two two one zero five gives us plus two two one zero five gives us nine one four six four. So it's it is correct. What did everyone think to that? Any good? Straightforward or? Yeah, it's not too bad. It should be the task that you're looking for good marks on. Um, 
it is a task that students generally do well on. Um, but it's just if you if you as long as you don't panic and you give yourself time, you will do well on this. I promise you. Cool. Uh, has anyone got any questions or queries about anything? Uh, I know AT have been dropping news bombshells left, right, and centre recently. Um, it's all good. Who said being a council tutor was boring? Um, but yeah. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you've signed up uh, uh, about all the other revision sessions. Next week's session. Good question, Becky. Um, a, it might not be me, because I might be on annual leave, because it's my wife's birthday, but it depends if she's working or not. Um, so it might move. But next week's session, I would like to think, is going to go back to task one. The reason being is lots of people didn't sign up until sort of mid-session, and they forgot to um, record task one, to be brutally honest. So, so then we'll have the complete set of recordings. Uh, but I will be in touch about that, because uh, it might be a little bit different uh, next week. No, I hope you're... Uh, uh, I enjoy doing it, to be honest, Sarah. Um, and you know, if you uh, did want to think about level four or level three, don't forget, 25% off. PQ magazine can't be wrong, shall we say. Uh, cool. No, I appreciate it. Um, don't forget, also, we've got our Facebook Live that I did tonight. I joined uh, Damon Kelly's on Monday night. It's going to be the one on Thursday um, that I'm going to join. Um, also, I'll let the cow out of the bag, I can't hold on to it anymore. If anyone's looking for any extra question practice, um, we have our new mock product that's about to launch um, next week, but I can't wait. Um, I'm going to launch it. So for, for £15 per unit, £15 per unit, that's all I ask, you will get a video debrief of a mock. You will get two marked time online mocks. Um, and you will also get AAT debriefs of, uh, sorry, debriefs of the AT sample exams because I see they don't give explanations. Um, actually, Joanna, um, very good question. Uh, well, I will send, uh, don't worry, everyone will get a link once it launches, but if anyone wants it sooner rather than later, uh, you can email me and it's to my email address that you hopefully can see there, uh, and I can get you a sneak peek. £15 per unit, and um, we have it for every single unit, pretty much. Um, in terms of recordings, I am going to send out the recording of this. Um, but all the recordings are actually going on to our YouTube channel, because um, it just makes more sense, rather than going, here's the recording, here's the recording, just go to our YouTube channel, make sure you like our YouTube channel and subscribe. Um, there's loads of stuff on there, like literally loads of stuff. Um, so yeah. Right, so in terms of, Becky, in terms of things to cover that you're still unsure on as a quick refresher, um, I mean, every, every VPK has five tasks. If you, if you can't do one of the tasks, you're just gonna struggle to pass the exam. Um, uh, so, you, you know, accruals and payments, there's loads of free stuff on our YouTube channel for accruals and payments. Uh, bad debts, that's on there, I wrote that. Uh, disposals, I wrote that. Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, a blog I wrote that's not aimed at anyone in particular. Uh, there's loads of stuff on our YouTube channel. There's also loads of stuff on our hub. So I don't know if anyone looks at our hub. If I can find, well, I can't find the link. I just need to move this out of the way. Um, if you all go here, there is loads of free stuff here. Um, but like I say, if anyone wants um, to get started on you know, proper mock uh, questions, we've got video debriefs. Model online mock exams, but not only will you get the marked and get percentage, but you'll also get detailed uh, feedback as to uh, which bits you, you did well on, which bits you didn't, and also um, all the model solutions, and not just model solutions, but worked answers as well. Um, yeah, there's definitely one on disposals. Um, now, I should say this mock product, uh, if you're an online student, you've already seen them. Uh, so if you're an online student, don't bother buying it. Um, it's just uh, the same stuff you've already got. If you are a self study student with first intuition or you're not with first intuition, £15 of these with new questions, online mocks, done to time with full feedback. Uh, yeah, like Nicola says, you know, these are, are um, 
the same ones. However, however, I, it's just the gift that keeps on giving. If you are a first intuition student and you want extra questions on anything, get in touch with your tutor because we just went and wrote a shed load of new questions uh, two weeks ago um, to keep our apprentices and whatnot ticking over. Um, basically, if anyone has any questions, just get in touch. Um, yeah, um, in terms of Sarah, these questions have not been they're no, in no other publisher's books, I promise you that. And unlike other publishers, they've all got proper workings and explanations. They don't just give you the answer and expect you to work it out. Um, da, 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 I saw, I've got stuff flying out everywhere. Uh, AVSY. AVSY will be coming. Um, I'm working very, very hard to make sure it's ready for the 8th. If it's not for the 8th, it will be days after. I have spent today writing ethics questions. It was hard, I'm being honest. But yeah, AVSY, uh, we want every single unit every uh, ready for launch for Monday the 8th. But if you want it beforehand and it's AVBK, get me in touch with me. Uh, if you want the 15 quid thing, drop me an email and I'll sort you out. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Sarah, ethics is painful as so all, really is. Um, yep, yeah, I've got everything ready for a level four launch. Uh, yeah, it's AVSY, because I don't like writing ethics questions. But yeah, um, level four, that's all there as well. Cool. Uh, lovely, right, uh, it's eight o'clock. Um, I have had enough writing ethics questions for today. Uh, I'll be in touch, I'll send out the recording. And is anyone get in touch? Let us know. Um, Lenka, ethics in level four. Yep, not to such a great degree, but can't avoid it, unfortunately. Such is life. But then, why would you? Keep you out of prison. Cool. Right. Have a good evening. And I will see you at some form of media channel, Zoom, Facebook Live, this, at some point in the future. At some point. See. Cool. Right. Have a good evening. And uh, any questions, just let me know.